Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick, and I want to continue this series from my father's book, A Handbook for Christian Soldiers. And this chapter is about the concern. God is concerned about men, all people, men, women, children. He wants them all to be saved. That's what the scripture says in 2 Peter 3.15 and 1 Timothy 3.9. The scripture says, God is not willing that any should perish, but all should come to repentance. The scripture says that Jesus died for the sins of all people. Those who, during a time of evangelistic outreach, should be the objects of our personal concern. When we're sharing the gospels because we care about people, we should get to know all about them and pray for them. I think it's really sad. I, I've noticed this uh, one day, this has been a while back, uh, we were doing visitation uh, for the church. And this lady, you know, knocked on the door and said, hey, we're from the church down the road, just trying to get to know people in our community. And uh, she invited us into her house and we, we sat and talked for a while. And she was talking, she, I guess she only had one child, a son, and he moved away. He was, I don't remember what he was doing. He had some kind of a career and uh, he was busy and didn't, see his mother too often. She hadn't seen him for a long time, and apparently she didn't really have a big circle of friends. So she was very lonely, and it's like that people didn't care about her for us to come by and, you know, and visit. Uh, she was receiving company. How many people out there are lonely? People uh, are out there that we haven't shown compassion and mercy to who need uh, the community of, of faith. And uh, this should be our concern. We care about people. We should get to know about them and pray for them. Because of the danger of overextending ourselves, one should only spend time with those who are truly interested in the things of Christ. That's true. I mean, you know, we have to take care of ourselves as well. And we have to be focused on the mission. Beware of wasting time with people who are half-hearted. One should not waste time with them to the exclusion of others who have never heard the gospel. If certain individuals will not listen to the word of God or follow instructions, then go on to someone else who will. The world is waiting to hear the message of salvation. We are looking for laborers of the harvest, as it says in Matthew chapter 9, verse 38, and Mark chapter 6, verse 11. This is a whosoever will gospel. And uh, as much as we want people to be saved, there are people who, whose hearts are hard for a reason. And then we need to go and people make a decision. That's what Billy Graham titled, titled his, uh, his, his magazine, Decision. We need to be making decisions for Christ. And if people aren't willing to make a decision, then we should continue to seek and find those who will decide to become a follower of Jesus Christ. Here my father talks about the net principle of evangelism and the angler principle. Both net and hook are used to catch fish. To fish, This is a biblical. The hook is personal and selective method, and the fisherman usually knows who he has at the end of the line. The angler method is exemplified by the personal man-to-man -man contact, while the net method is more general. An example of the net type of evangelism would be the public gospel tent meeting, or like uh, Billy Graham would do these massive evangelistic crusades. Um, that seems to be part of a bygone era. It's kind of unfortunate uh, where you have this preacher who could fill up a stadium. I think uh, I went to go hear a Reinhard Bonnke, and they had this excellent uh, uh, group. Um, it was a Jesus Culture was performing with him as as Reinhard Bonnke, this great evangelist in, in uh, Africa, he's passed away since then, uh, was preaching the gospel. And I would say that the Colosseum, I mean, it was raining or, or sprinkling, so the weather was inclement. Uh, and they did have people in the arena, but as far as the stadiums, it was like half filled. There's a lot of vacant seats and it's unfortunately, here we are at the city of Houston, and we couldn't fill a stadium with a great worldwide evangelist and uh, you know, a very good uh, music ministry team uh, and music. So uh, Houston is, unfortunately, Houston's a godless city. It's a wicked city. I mean, I'm from the Houston area. I love Houston. I'm just being realistic about this city and where it is. And uh, I remember when I went to Africa, I didn't fill up a big coliseum, but uh, we had this, I got filled up a building uh, when I was able to preach over there. It seems like, well, Jesus said, blessed are those who are 
who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. So it seems like you know we're in need of revival in America. Our nation's turned away from God. But Africa, we have people turning towards God in a great revival, a great spiritual awakening. And uh, we need to, if people are receptive to the gospel, like my dad's saying, that's, we need to go where people are receptive. If people, Well, Jesus himself said that, didn't he? Not my father could have put that in here. Uh, he said that uh, if you go in a, in a town and village and they don't accept you, then, you know, take your feet, you know, your shoes off your feet and brush off the dust and we'll be more tolerable for Sodom and Gomorrah and, you know, the great day of judgment in this town and go somewhere else that will receive the gospel. So uh, what, else, what else did Jesus say? Do, do not give which is holy unto to dogs. So if, if people don't receive it, then, then find those who will. So... Um, we need to do one-on-one -on -one evangelism, but we need to also uh, do a blanket type of evangelism as well. Okay, let's get to the next page. I just want to go on this one page, this chapter, and then we'll continue. Uh, when the net is drawn, during the, the invitation, many types of people often respond. I remember Billy Graham was saying, you know, you'd see these people. Now, when people went up into uh, Billy Graham, uh, evangelistic crusades. Sometimes the people going up were uh, people taking a group of those who wanted to be saved. So, but among those, Billy Graham himself said, among those that went up, you see these big crowds of people. Like I said, some of them were kind of ushers going in there, ushering people in. Be that as it may, there were still a lot of people who were getting converted. And uh, but Billy, Billy Graham said, in the end, only ten percent of all those people you see go uh, go forward. You know, maintain their faith to their until their end of their life. Uh, most of these people, 90% of them fall away. But, but Jesus said the same thing. Do you, not, you got the parable of the sower, the sower throwing his seed, and a lot of the seed doesn't bear fruit, but some does, and it bears abundant fruit. So uh, that's why we need to continue to reach out uh, to a lost, sinful, and dying, dying world. Uh, there are many people who respond. Um, of those, maybe only a few are really earnest and willing to pay the price for true discipleship. How far do men do not make good soldiers? We're trying to have soldiers of the cross. Such men could do more harm than good to the church or Christian fellowship. I think that we've seen it. We had this big struggle in the Southern Baptist Convention, and it's been you know, decades ago, where the liberals were trying to kill the church, basically. You know, they're in the church, but they're against the Bible. They're against the gospel. They're, they're hardcore leftists. And uh, they, they harmed the body of Christ. And unfortunately, this, it's been that way from the beginning. There will always be people. Another parable of Jesus is you had the, uh, the man that, <laughs> that planted good seed, but Satan comes in, he puts his people in there. And Jesus says, you know, all right, they're going to have to grow up together. There's going to be this challenge. On the day of judgment, uh, we're going to take the wicked uh, false disciples, and, and uh, they're going to go to hell you know, burn them up, but the uh, the good seed will grow into good fruit and will be gathered into his barn or into the kingdom. So the truly converted sinner is willing to give uh, to go all the way with Jesus. I mean, how many people are willing to go all the way with Jesus? We cannot afford the half-hearted men. We must have only those who are wholehearted and loyal. The principle of net and and culling the catch, removing the undesirable from the good, is found in Matthew chapter thirty. 13, 47 through 48. I was thinking about that. There's, there is that parable where Jesus talks about the fisherman. He has a big net. He's got a lot of fish in there, but some of he throws away because it's not good. It's not, it's not a good harvest, if you will, or a good catch. Uh, we should seek only faithful men while rejecting those who are indifferent and clearly not willing to pay the, the price of discipleship. Read chapter uh, 10, 34 through 39 of Matthew. Illustrations of the hook principle also found in Scripture. Look up uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse 27, and Matthew 4, 19. So, I was reading about these people talking about how, you know, the church is obvious in obvious decline. And someone was saying, that's because we have had bad leadership. Because people want to compromise and bring worldliness in the church, and they, they weaken and divide the church. Or the devil uses false doctrines, heresies, um, frivolous issues to, to distract um, the church. But we need strong leaders uh, and people who aren't afraid to. Like, we don't want to go around 
you know, it, it is true that, and people know the world's in bad shape. And so we don't want to focus on the negative all the time. We need to build people up. But we need to confront the reality of biblical doctrine, the reality of sin, and teach the scripture boldly. And we don't really have that type of leadership too much anymore. I do think that, you know, Billy Graham's passed away. But uh, I think his, his son, Franklin Graham, is doing a, uh, a good work. And one of the ways you can tell if you're doing something right versus wrong is how you'll be attacked. You know, it's like, so people are attacking Franklin Graham for you know, praying in Jesus' name and things like that, for doing the right thing. That's just the way it is. In conclusion, we need to be preaching about conversion and salvation. See, we're supposed to be evangelical Christians. I was reading about, uh, I think, Charisma Magazine. They're talking about full gospel, Pentecostal, and charismatic churches. And, you know, decades ago, people in these churches were being filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, and see healings. And they're moving away from that. So it's like, well, what's the charismatic church about? And some people say, well, maybe it's the prosperity gospel, which is a false doctrine. Uh, that's sad, Right. And my father was telling when he was, uh, you know, I guess I was in uh, Paducah, Kentucky, outside of Cairo, Illinois, growing up in an independent Baptist church. Every time they had church, somebody in the church was coming up and getting saved. Every week they're having a baptism. And this is probably in the, I guess, in the 50s, you know, as he was a, when he was a child. And now churches go by a year, two years, no conversions, no baptisms. It's a sign that, uh, that we're not bearing fruit. And uh, we need to get right with God. So we need to be preaching conversion. Matthew, sorry, this is an Acts. We do a lot of Matthew verses, Acts chapter 3, verse 19. Men must be converted. We can lead them to a decision if they are sincere and really want to know Christ. But we must be aware of bruising the fruit. The Spirit of God alone makes people uh, the heart ready for salvation. We're talking about that the other day. And uh, there's a lot of well-meaning Christians that can hurt the fruit. That's by... The reality is uh, conviction. <clears throat> conviction is the work of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> the, the Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. And, I mean, we should preach the word so the Lord can use the word to convict hearts. We shouldn't be trying to put people under conviction all the time or do the work of the Holy Spirit. We proclaim the gospel, the truth, in compassion. But we have to, you know, we, we maintain these moral standards as well. But... Uh, we have to have we have to be in the right the right spirit ourselves, right? If we're too judgmental, condemnational, or condemnational or legalistic, then it's not the Holy Spirit that's going to be convicting these people because we're not operating correctly in the Spirit. Then perhaps an evil spirit could come in there deceptively and, and even drive people away from the Lord. So we have to be careful about our spiritual state and how we say things. We all make mistakes. We need to strive to do what's good. If the Lord sees our sincerity, he will reward our faith. Uh, the Spirit of God alone makes the heart ready for salvation, but if, uh, if one should refuse to accept Christ, we must uh, let them clearly know that they've rejected salvation and accepted eternal punishment. So it's not to receive Christ, it's to reject him. And we must not forget to em emphasize that point. That's, that's true. Now is the day of salvation. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. <laughs> you know, you need to serve... Christ today. My father had that slogan in, in Vietnam, repent or perish. <laughs> so people do need to make a decision for Christ. And, uh, uh, you know, we should be concerned about uh, dying and lost and going to without salvation to the grave and, and facing their eternal destination. Or, you know, I was, I was talking to a soldier about this this weekend. It's like, you know, we need to be prepared to stand before God and give account of our lives. That's why we need Jesus. That's why we need Yeshua, the Messiah, uh, because salvation is through him alone. The scripture says, uh, we are saved by grace through faith, not of works, lest any man should boast.